Rebellion, and I'm here with a special top five list for the Summer Spectacular. Now on our channel, we love to showcase game components. I just can't help myself sometimes. I love adding those extra bits and pieces to a game. It just adds to the immersive experience and theme. So before I even start on our list, I wanna add this little asterisk. You don't actually need any of the upgrades I'm talking about today to play or enjoy a game. These just happen to be a few of the ones that we recommend the most. All right, let's get this started. Coming in at number five, I wanna talk about inserts. Now we've all been there, right? We have the publisher that attempted to include an insert and failed miserably. But what about the ones who have succeeded? So pick up games like Parks or Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig from Stonemeyer, and you'll find those amazing game trays in them. Now these things make storing and setting up a game a dream, but they aren't the only options. So take City Builders Ancient World, a recent Kickstarter delivery from Inside Up Games. They designed their own insert for the game. So every piece has its place. And I have tested it out on the shelf sideways, transporting it to a game night and had no issues. And then finally, we have our aftermarket inserts from companies like Meeple Realty and Broken Token. These teams are puzzle masters. They create and design these inserts so everything just has its place. You just have to build it correctly. But the results are usually quite helpful. Now, our broken token insert for Lords of Waterdeep drastically reduced our setup time. So inserts often solve a storage and setup problem. And that is why it is our number five component upgrades we think you should try. Moving on, number four on my list may not be a favorite on everyone's table, but for some, it can open up an entirely different hobby. I'm talking about miniatures. Now we have a talented minis painter here on our team. So that might be how we got a few extra votes on this one, but we like minis. They can be unique for each player. They add a 3D element to the board and they can be painted if you enjoy doing that sort of thing. Now, could you use a colored cube in its place? Yep, you sure can. And if that's what you like to do, then party on Wayne. Greenbrier Games has some outstanding minis in their Folklore The Affliction line, and Lucky Duck's recent Destiny's release is also a new favorite. Some games rely heavily on minis to immerse the player into the game, like Firefly the Game from Gale Force 9 or Star Wars Rebellion from FFG. But you can even find minis in games like The Godfather. Painted or not, we think they add an extra depth to gameplay, and that's why they made the list. Okay, number three brings a little noise to the table with that oh so satisfying sound of metal coins. And I'll be honest, that's the main reason we like metal coins in our games. That clink sound you hear when you rake in some income, it's just so fun. Especially when you have more than your opponent. So Garfield Games has some excellent metal coins in their North Sea and Architects collections, and they can be used for other games as well. We use our scythe coins for multiple games. There are several different styles of metal coins you can pick up that can be used for lots of different things. Draw Labs offers a great Kickstarter, usually yearly for some of these. Now I wanna tack on a sort of honorable mention for iron clays. While not technically metal, these can be really fun to use, especially in Western themed games. They also provide that satisfying sound when you stack them together. And at the end of the day, cardboard bits work for money too. Just avoid that paper monopoly money. Now we're getting down to things that will absolutely influence my purchases. If a game has these last two, it's totally got my attention. So at number two, I'm talking about acrylic tiles or bits. So you do have a couple of different options here that I've lumped together, but let me focus on the tiles first. They just bring table presents with them. Fight in a Box offers collector's editions of all of their small box games as acrylic tiles, and they're just amazing. 25th Century Games also recently released Kohaku with some beautiful fish tiles. Now, these games will play the same with cardboard pieces or even cards, but 
the acrylic tiles add in just a little something extra that can really make the art pop. I love these for the table presence that they bring. So switching over to the acrylic bits, and you most often find geek bits from Board Game Geek. You can also find things like this on Etsy, but some of the best acrylic tokens are the ones for Quacks of Quedlinburg. And while they are a little pricey, they added some longevity that the cardboard pieces were not going to be able to provide. Now I'll admit, this particular one is probably more personal preference than some of the others on our list. If I truly love a game and plan to play it a lot, then I'm gonna look for these types of bit upgrades so that I don't have to worry about the cardboard wearing from use. And it's just a little extra bling on the table. We're down to number one. We've already talked about inserts, minis, metal coins, and acrylic tiles and bits. Now I should throw out another honorable mention for play mats that's not my number one. Nope. It is custom shaped pieces. I absolutely love these things. I've seen more and more Kickstarter stretch goals using these as an incentive, but to be honest, it's becoming a fun way to add just a little something extra to make a game stand out in a crowd. And in a somewhat booming time for games, this is a good way to stand out. So you'll find these in games like Everdale from Starling Games. All of the resources are custom from squishy berries to sticks and it just adds a level of depth to the theme that I truly enjoy. Elf Creek Games is really starting to shine in this area. So if you check out their latest release, Honey Buzz, you'll find custom bee meeples or beeples and just incredible bits representing the nectar the bees produce. Then you have games like New York Zoo from Capstone Games that have custom wooden animal pieces to play with. I love the board presence that these types of bits have, and they're just incredibly fun to play with. Give me that added layer of theming every day of the week. So that does it for this list. Did you agree with any of our picks? They may or may not be for everyone, but for us, they add more depth and fun to our game time. Tell us some of your favorites in the comments. Until the next video, follow us at Tabletop Rebellion to see how we're bringing people together one game at a time. <laughs>